USC announced its new head football coach. Meet Lincoln Riley and learn about his plans for Trojan football. The new COVID-19 variant could change your travel plans. Find out what countries are on the no-fly list. The world has lost a creative visionary and pioneer in the couture and street fashion scene. We look back at Virgil Abloh's life and career. Annenberg TV News is next. Live from USC, you're watching Annenberg TV News. To, to win championships, to get this program to where we all know and believe that it should be, it's going to take every single one of us. New head football coach Lincoln Riley has big plans for Trojan football. Good evening, I'm Brett Chody. And I'm Michael Sang. Annenberg Media sports reporter Emily Bonilla takes us to the Coliseum where President Carol Fault introduced Riley. This afternoon, Lincoln Riley admitted it felt surreal to be here in Los Angeles. He said he's honored to be USC's head football coach. Uh, to our faculty, our staff, everybody involved with USC, I want you to know that I'm going to do my best to make sure that we represent you well. Uh, I cannot wait to, to go to work with you. Uh, we're going to put out a football team that hopefully you're proud of on the field, but you're proud of what they do in the classroom. They're, you're proud of what they do in the community and that we represent you well. Uh, and then we work incredibly well together. So can I this afternoon, this afternoon, Riley said, quote, it's time to go to work. He said he's committed to building the best staff in college football and that culture will be team first. Fans are thrilled about the new head football coach. Annenberg Media reporter Nathan Hyun spoke with students and alumni about what they expect. The hiring of Lincoln Riley is already exciting USC fans. There is renewed hope he'll lead the Trojans back to the national championship. I'm feeling great about it. I think he's going to bring a lot of new opportunities for us and hopefully secure another title for us and continue to do it year after year. As soon as I saw him coming here, I was like, dream come true. It's awesome. It's a lot better than anyone could have ever expected, honestly. We'll definitely be competing uh, for the CFP. Uh, you know, we'll definitely be expected to win Pac-12 championships. I think that's a standard here. People are on social media expressing their feelings about Riley. They are calling this a home run hire. And this has been long overdue for fans, including a former USC football player who went to the Rose Bowl in 1985. We just have to act like Trojans, like winning Trojans, like we've been there. We've done that, but we're going to do it again. And Lincoln Riley gives us a lot of hope. I want national com competitiveness. I want us to be able to go into every game expecting to win. We never, ever expected to lose uh, back when I was a student and even in the years following. That's what we need to get back. This is likely the boost that USC needed to fulfill its expectations of becoming the elite football program it once used to be. Some writers say that this is the biggest coaching hire in USC history. At the very least, USC fans can say, hey, listen, they went out and got the best coach they possibly could. And I think if you were to talk about, hey, who could you hire to be a, the coach of your program for the next 10, 15, 20 years? This is the guy. So, you know, like all those fans who said, I'm not going to go to the Coliseum. I'll, I'm not going to go there. They're all going to come back. USC hopes this hire brings fans back to games. USC Athletics has already released season ticket information for next season. For Annenberg Media, I'm Nathan Hyun. SC fans are ecstatic Riley is now a Trojan. The Sooners, on the other hand, are disappointed, even angry. Students at Oklahoma University put up signs near the center of campus calling Riley a traitor. We caught up with a few OU students to get their reaction. I do wish that if we, if Lincoln was to leave, he would have done so in a more graceful and respectable manner than he did. It's just kind of a blind side to OU fans everywhere. Um, I'm comparing it to the 2016 KD leaving for the Warriors, um, and, and in my opinion, kind of worse. I mean, I hope the best for him at USC, but seeing his character with how he treated Oklahoma, I really don't think he's going to treat USC to the way it should be deserved. Clearly, many OU students are taking this loss pretty hard. OU football has replaced Riley with former OU head coach Bob Stoops as the Sooners head into their bowl game. We'll have more on Lincoln Riley coming up later in sports. President Biden announced an air travel ban from eight countries in the southern part of Africa to combat the latest coronavirus variant called Omicron. The U.S. has banned travel from South Africa, Botswana, Zimbabwe, 
Namibia, Lesotho, Eswatini, Mozambique, and Malawi. Non-US citizens who were in these countries within the last 14 days will not be allowed into the United States. For Guyana Singh, returning home for winter break could drastically affect her goals in the US. Now some countries are starting to feel the economic effects of the travel ban. Obviously with all of the flight restrictions and things like that, it, it just doesn't seem likely at all that I'll be able to go home. But the financial loss of plane tickets, which has been a nightmare, trying to figure that out. Um, also you have, you know, you want to be home with your family for Christmas. I haven't been home in over a year um, and I just really miss, you know, my hometown. The village where I live in was where it's on against most of its tourism and I think it's going to mess it up a lot because the, they were expecting a lot of um, uh, travelers from maybe the UK, the US, but I don't think that's going to be happening. Cases of the virus have been identified in other countries including the UK, Spain, Canada, Denmark, Italy, Belgium, Germany, the Netherlands, Portugal, and Australia. The US has not imposed bans on travelers from these countries. Today, the World Health Organization described the new Omicron variant as one of, quote, concern. That's because it's easily transmitted and has many mutations. Moderna says it's working on a vaccine for the Omicron variant that could be ready by early 2022. The vaccines will either be fully effective against this variant or they may be a little less effective. It's really important that we vaccinate not just ourselves in this country, but that we vaccinate the world to finally get this pandemic under control. What you're trying to do, you're trying to target this vaccine so that it really neutralizes, it produces antibodies that neutralizes uh, the, the, uh, the virus. The CDC emphasizes the importance of getting vaccinated and getting the booster shot if eligible. Everyone should adhere to masking requirements and get tested if they start to feel sick, regardless of vaccination status. For more on the country's response to the Omicron variant, we go to our political reporter, Marco Ramirez. Welcome to Fireside Facts. Today, President Biden responded to the latest news about the Omicron variant with a message to Americans. All of this is uh, confusing to a lot of people. But if it's confusing to you, let me close with this simple message. If you are vaccinated but still worried about the new variant, get your booster. If you aren't vaccinated, Get that shot. Go get that first shot. The U.S. isn't the only country taking action against the variant. A few others have placed travel restrictions, including Australia, France, Germany, Greece, and Japan. I asked a UCLA biostatistics professor about the likelihood of the variant being in the U.S. already. As we've learned from, um, from almost two years, uh, this virus is very wily and really hard to contain. So Omicron, these, uh, these variants do not get around our testing. So um, if Omicron is not here now, I suspect that it will be soon. It's still unclear just how infectious Omicron is, but White House Chief Medical Advisor Dr. Anthony Fauci says it will take approximately two weeks to have more definitive information on the severity of the variants. Many students experienced an array of technical issues today while trying to schedule a COVID test on MySHR. Without a scheduled test, students are unable to access campus with Trojan Check. Student Health released a statement that they are aware of the issues with MySHR and IT has increased capacity to fix it. They said that an influx of users logging on around 9.30 this morning most likely caused the slowdown. I've been trying to schedule a test since 9.30. My first class today is at 3.30, and I actually like didn't go last week because I was sick, so I really wanted to go today, but I've been emailing my teacher, and I just like told her what was happening, and I don't unless I can book a test, I won't be able to go to my class in person. But I think just like the technological issues, like they should have people trying to fix the back end of that right now um, because one, we can't go to class, and two, like people are traveling from all over, so they should be able to get those COVID tests like immediately. Student Health says those who are unable to get an appointment online should walk up to any testing site on campus and refresh the schedule when they arrive, as appointments are added when there is high volume. USC will be hosting a semi-annual drug take-back day this Wednesday. Students can drop off prescription drugs safely and anonymously at various locations across campus. It's good public relations. Um, 
but it 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 doesn't seem like a hundred percent of a of a of a solution, and it, it it's a start. Um, if you're dealing with people who are in recovery, the opiates are around. There's always kind of uh, for some of them the temptations there. There will be four drop-off locations across the UPC and HSC campuses. While this event allows for students to get rid of unused prescriptions, the president of a drug awareness group on campus wants to see more from the university regarding drug safety. You know, while, while the Take Back Day is, is kind of one thing that's it's, it's definitely a great thing to do, I don't think that that is the primary issue affecting USC students, that being, um, you know, extra prescription drugs floating around. The USC School of Pharmacy is also working with a student-led group on a website designed to distribute drug safety kits. These kits will include Narcan and drug testing strips to help prevent overdoses. Students reflect on the life of Virgil Abloh, the creative director of Louis Vuitton and founder of Off-White. Residential assistants will be going on strike this Friday, demanding better compensation. And check out a clothing line founded by a woman trying to empower others through fashion. Virgil Abloh, CEO of Off-White and designer for Louis Vuitton Men, died of cancer at age 41. Abloh fought cancer privately for two years while still working in the fashion industry. Abloh founded Off-White in 2013, making it a popular name in streetwear and on the carpet. In 2018, Abloh was named the first black artistic director for Louis Vuitton Men. He steered fashion in a new direction by challenging gender norms. So I think that like in the way that I view fashion in a Virgil Abloh context is I really appreciate things that are timeless that you can repurpose and remake and recontextualize. It's just really sad that someone like him just suddenly passed away because I actually wanted to meet him like one day, like probably doing like fashion design or something like that. It's really helped me like push my um, creativity to the next level. And that's something I would like to see more at USC. Abloh's legacy will be remembered through fashion, music, and culture worldwide. His artistic expression formed a new identity and paved the way for future designers. USC residential assistants are planning to go on strike this Friday. They're frustrated over what they say is a lack of housing and dining compensation, as well as decreases in financial aid packages. The organizing committee is encouraging students to sign the online petition in its Instagram bio and reach out to the offices of residential education and student affairs to voice any concerns. They're not making it as big of a problem as it should be. Um, you know, like we're here, we're promoting engagement in our community. You know, we're first line of our residents with residential education. So I feel like more attention should be put into it and everyone should be compensated fairly for the job. They, it's like they want you to do all these, to make all this effort for these residents on campus, but they don't really want to make an effort for you. The USC RA Organizing Committee released a list of their demands on Instagram. They include amnesty for all RAs, a stipend of $10,000 per semester to compensate for the reduction in financial aid, and a seat at the table for the RA Advisory Board in higher up meetings. Now, Trojans, as you may have noticed, things are getting cold and the weather is turning California from a sunny state into a winter wonderland. So let's go to Julia, our weather anchor, to learn more about our five-day forecast. Julia? Thanks, Michael. Uh, there's not really any cool national days today, but it is Cyber Monday, to which I will say, please be careful as the carbon footprint on Cyber Monday is kind of ridiculous. So try to limit your purchases, like if you really need something or if you want to buy a present, a gift for someone, I don't know, maybe me then it would be okay. Uh, no, but my gift to you guys is the final forecast of the Mondays of the semester. Uh, it is currently 71 degrees with 35 percentage of humidity. Coming on over to the five day forecast. Tuesday, high of 75, low of 52. Wednesday, high of 78, kind of warm, maybe the beach, uh, low of 52. Thursday,
Thursday, high of 70, low of 50. Friday, high of 68, low of 50. And Saturday, high of 68, low of 50. Two days in a row. Wow. Um, we are entering exam season. If you guys need any help on any homeworks or projects, let me know. The only compensation I ask for is for someone to take my GE exam. It is geology. Please help. I'm just kidding. Um, please don't expel me. Um, for the final time, I'm going to toss it on over to sports. Just ahead, we'll hear again from new head football coach Lincoln Riley and find out why fans are so excited. Current and former athletes took to social media to comment on the Lincoln Riley hire. What did they have to say about the new coach? Riley is inheriting a difficult situation at USC. How quickly can he bring the Trojans back to the forefront of college football? Sports is next. New head football coach Lincoln Riley pledged to make USC football a team every Trojan can be proud of. Here's what he had to say today at the Coliseum. We plan on building the best roster in the country and, and, and within that locker room, the best culture in the country. It's not about the individual players here. It's not going to be. We're not going to let it be. Culture will be team first and we will have a room of great athletes. Yes, they will, but they're going to be people that care about winning championships, winning rings, holding up trophies, raising banners, and that's... Riley is one of college football's most successful young coaches in the country. He spent five years at Oklahoma with immense success along the way. Riley will come to USC with a 55-10 and 10 coaching record after five seasons as a Sooner. He has four Big 12 Conference Championships and three college football playoff appearances. Riley was also named the 2018 Best Co-Big 12 Coach of the Year. An emotional Riley said his thanks to the Sooners. I think it would not be fitting for me to recognize uh, the University of Oklahoma, uh, the impact that it had on me, the people there. I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful for my time here. That's a, one of the best college football programs in the country and, and has been forever and will continue to be. Under Riley, quarterback accomplishments and honors include Baker Mayfield, who won the Heisman Trophy in 2017, Kyler Murray in 2018, and Jalen Hurts as the Heisman runner-up in 2019. Riley's history of coaching Heisman winning quarterbacks should be appealing to true, chesh, to true freshman quarterback Jackson Dart. The freshman has shown flashes of being USC's quarterback of the future and will now have a full offseason to train with the new head coach. Riley's hire means high expectations for USC's football program and a likely shift in the successful recruiting. USC football stars past and present have been reacting to the buzz via Twitter, from Drake London to Reggie Bush, Matt Lineman, and Leonard White. Emotions continue now that Riley has spoken at the Coliseum. Let's check in with Matt Andrade for more on how Riley's hiring could impact recruiting. Thanks, Emily. With Lincoln Riley's departure, Oklahoma is seeing recruits drop like flies from up upcoming recruiting classes. Many of these recruits could be looking to join Riley at USC. The most notable recruits decommitting from Oklahoma include the number one wide receiver in 2023, Brandon Innes, number five running back in 2023, Trayvon Webb, and number two quarterback in 2022, Malachi Nelson. The number two running back in 2022, Relic Brown, is expected to decommit soon, and both he and Nelson are from, the Southern Cal are from Southern California and have been heavily targeted by USC. USC has a good chance of salvaging this year's recruiting class with Riley's recruiting prowess and the potential addition of some of OU's decommits. Riley will now be move, not be moving to Los Angeles alone. Mike Bone was seen talking with Alex Grinch, who will be USC's new defensive coordinator. Along with Grinch, Riley brings more staff from Oklahoma with him, including the Sooners wide receivers coach, offensive line coach, and strength coach. Athletic director Mike Bone and his chief of staff, Brandon Sozna, are the masterminds behind the decision to hire Lincoln Riley. Bone was looking for a championship caliber coach, and that, that's exactly what he found. It's apparent Bone is hiring the best coach available, but are USC fans in for a long rebuilding process? Emily, how much time will it take before the Trojans are competing for a national championship again? You know, Matt, I really think we don't have to wait too, too much. Here we have not just next season to await, but I think we can start going on with this in preseason practices. I mean, the fact that we have 
Jackson Dart and all his might and what he has shown for this season as a true freshman, but let's not forget that we still have Keaton Slovis. And this new coach, this new coaching staff is going to bring so much potential to USC and what we have to offer as a team. Lincoln Riley can bring this team to the national, to the college football playoff as early as next season. He, he has the two things you need to be, need to have to be a great college football coach, great recruiting and great ability to develop players. He has both of those. And then the Pac-12 schedule, it's just not that difficult. The two teams in the, in the championship game this weekend are o Oregon and Utah. Oregon lost to a, uh, a team, Stanford team that lost seven games straight after beating Oregon, and Utah lost to San Diego State and BYU early in the season. The teams just aren't that great in the Pac-12 schedule, and, and USC can take advantage and get to the, um, the Pac-12 title game and eventually the college football playoff. That's it for sports. Now back to news. Hear from the creator of a streetwear line whose goal is to empower women through fashion. Now it's time for our segment, Making a Difference, when we feature people doing something unique for their community. Fashion. The name of the clothing line created by Rachel Gomez is about more than just fashion. Viva La Bonita is designed to send a message about pride. Viva La Bonita is a women's streetwear and apparel brand inspired by the spirit of the mujeres who are fearless. The San Fernando Valley native launched her business with just a few bucks in her pocket and never looked back. I knew that I was ready to take Viva La Bonita full time was when I saw how powerful like the Latina community that we grew on the internet was and how much a brand like Viva La Bonita was needed. Viva La Bonita means long live beautiful, powerful women. And it's been the brand of choice for many women of color the past seven years. It helps me embrace my culture and the word bonita just gives me more confidence to be me. Well, it hasn't always been easy for Gomez. She thanks her family for their support, especially her grandmother, Margarita Sanchez Duran. The best advice that she gave me was very simple. She was like, you just have to do what you have to do to make it work with what you have. Gomez wants to inspire women to go towards their dream. Really believe in yourself and have patience with your journey's time and your journey's pace. She says, be a part of something you love. That's a wrap! Yeah. For Edinburgh Media, I'm Lupe Llerenas. Well, that's it for the show for today, but, I, Brett, this is the, you know what? This is the first time that I've seen you in person at our desk. I've always been so used to just listening to your voice and hearing your little uh, voice etiquette from the, the mic. Yeah, I know Michael, it feels so good. We're both here with COVID and everything. We have had to be doing this from two different parts of the media center, but it's great to interact with one another. And, you know, I can't believe it's our last show. The semester has just flown by. I know, I'm so glad to be to have anchored with you. And I can remember all the moments, all the bloopers, and all the highlights that we've had <laughs> just doing this show together. Seriously. it's just been so great and now I got a lot of work to do this week with finals and everything but um, <laughs> I'm just so happy that this semester has gone so well. I know Christmas is coming up and we're I'm obviously going to be celebrating but how about you what are you what, what are you up to? I'll be back home in Chicago and just being with my family so very excited for that. I'll be in sunny LA studying for finals and getting ready for that end of semester grind but uh, but I know that all of us at Annenberg Media are so happy to have done this show this semester and thank you all so much.